Hey everyone! Today I'll be showing you guys how to make this really cute fuzzy sock cow plushie. For some of you, this may look a little bit familiar, and that's because I made it as part of a challenge I did, where I made as many sock plushies as I could in a thousand minutes. I filmed a lot of other cool tutorials while doing that challenge, including a puffin plush and a sushi set, and those videos will be coming out over the next couple months. This plushie is definitely the most advanced of the bunch, so I'd recommend checking out some of my other tutorials if you're brand new to making fuzzy sock plushies. It also requires small amounts of other colors, so if you've amassed quite the collection of small sock scraps after making a lot of plushies like me, this is probably a great plushie for you to make. You'll need one full white sock, and depending how you budgeted your sock fabric, you may need a tiny bit more for one of the ears. You'll also need some small scraps of black for the spots, and the heel of a pink sock for the nose. Lastly, for the horns, you'll need some yellow sock fabric. Out of all the parts of the plushie, these horns and the spots are probably the most optional, so it's okay if you don't have those colors. And of course, you'll also need standard sewing supplies, which will be listed in the description box. The first step is to turn the white sock so that the heel is facing upwards. Then, taking a marker that somewhat matches the color of your sock and also won't smudge too much, draw a shape similar to what you're seeing on screen onto your own sock as an outline to sew along. Try to make the sides as symmetrical as possible, making the front legs slightly longer than the back ones as shown. Don't bother marking a space for turning, as we'll be cutting a hole in the heel of the sock to use later. I know I usually show a shot of threading the needle, but I must have forgotten to film it this time. I'm sure all of you know how to do that, but if you're looking to brush up on your fuzzy sock plushy making knowledge, that does not flow well, but I never know what to call it. Uh, I have a video all about the basics, which will be linked in the description as well as in the iCard. It's a little outdated, like for example, I don't show how to attach the thread with a regular knot and a slip knot like I do now, but it works. Now backstitch along the line you trace, tying off when you get to the end and reattaching to stitch the other side. Now that we've got some time to kill while we're sewing, I'd like to direct your attention to this absolute bop of a song. It slaps, and it was composed and recorded by my friend Carter, who also has a channel here on YouTube with lots of music related content, so I'd really appreciate it if you stopped by. Next, you can cut out your piece with fabric shears, and make sure to save all your scraps, because it's going to be a little tight fitting the pieces on this one. After cutting a really tiny slit in the heel of the sock, a little goes a long way, proceed with turning and stuffing the piece. Be careful to poke out the limbs fully, and then stuff them with toy stuffing using small wisps one at a time. Then stuff a larger ball into the body, making sure to keep the amount of stuffing inside the plush even. Since I have too many fabric and yarn scraps, I've been chopping them up really finely to add to the centers of my plushies, saving out stuffing and reducing fabric waste. Then I used a running stitch to close the gap on the top. Be sure to make some reinforcement stitches once you pull the hole closed, then, without tying off your thread, bring it to the front of the plush to stitch it into a sitting position. I like to use a ladder stitch to make a clean join, however, it doesn't really matter too much because the fluffiness of the socks hides most of the thread texture. Starting with the hind and front legs, hold the plushie in position with one hand as you stitch. I then brought the thread to the other side and did the same thing, making sure to check its balance against the table periodically. Then lastly, I stitched the two front legs together. This specific design takes a lot of practice to do consistently, so don't feel bad if you don't get it on the first try. And you can also use the thread to smooth out the chest. Here's the toe of the sock that we cut off before. Make sure to flip it inside out before stitching, because I've made that mistake several times before in my videos. Then backstitch the sides of the bottom edge, leaving a space in the middle for turning and stuffing this time. Once you turn your piece inside out, it should look like half an ellipse. Then, you can stuff it just like we did for the body, making sure to get the stuffing into the corners. Now we'll be attaching our pink sock, and for this you'll only need the heel, so I cut off all the rest. I put the heel on the bottom of the head, and pinned it in a couple places so that it would stay while I evened up the top edge. Try your best to shape it into a straight line, though it doesn't have to be perfect. Then 
Then I sewed it into place using a small whip stitch. I didn't double up the thread for this because I figured it wouldn't be under much strain, and also it's upholstery thread, which doesn't break very easily at all. After I finished with that, I created two dimples where I wanted the eyes by making small stitches and pulling the thread taut. When doing this, it's important to tie off the thread super securely. On this plushie, I thankfully had the place where the head and body were going to join to make my knot so that it wouldn't show. It honestly looks like I didn't do anything, but it'll look a lot more evident once I put on the eyes. Next, I drew two small triangles on my yellow sock to make the horns. They were really small, so they were quick to stitch. Turning them is a bit finicky because it's hard to tuck the raw edges into a piece so small, but after you do that, you can secure it all in place with a couple of stitches. Then sew both of them onto the head. If these were a little too challenging to make, you could also needle felt them out of yellow wool to sew on. The ears are really similar, just with a larger triangle shape. This is the part where you may have to use more sock fabric, but I was able to make mine fit on the last scrap of my original sock. Though these are slightly larger than the horns, they still don't need stuffing and are sewn onto the sides of the head the same way. Before we attach the head and the body, we'll sew on a couple black spots cut out of our black sock fabric. It makes it easier if you cut any cylindrical pieces into flat sheets. I chose to put two spots on my plushie, which I held in place with a pin. I also placed the head on the body to make sure it looked okay. Then I whip stitched them on just like we did with the nose. Once we have those on, we can finally sew on the head. This is quite a long plushie to make, I have to say, but we're in the home stretch. I used a whip stitch and was careful to keep the head centered as I sewed. The second to last step is to add eyes. Here I used my usual method of super gluing flat backed beads, but you could also tie knots with yarn, which you will see a demonstration of in a minute. Sewing on regular beads would also work, and if you're into polymer clay, you could probably make your own bead. Needle felting a small black ball to sew on would also be pretty cool. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to substitute materials. And also, now you can see the dimples on the eyes pretty clearly. And the very last thing we have to do, which is totally optional, is to stitch on nostrils. Here I have some black light worsted weight yarn, which I'll be threading through a large yarn needle. Since we don't want the end of the thread to show, don't tie too many knots in the end, though preferably more than one, because one ended up popping through the fabric. Find an open part of the loosely woven fabric to insert the needle into, coming out through the nose, and tug gently. The goal is to allow the knot to slip into the plush through the fabric, but to catch on the stuffing, keeping the yarn hidden and relatively secure. Now tie a knot close to the fabric to form each of the nostrils as shown. I didn't film it, but to tie off the yarn, I tie the knot next to a hole in the fabric, like we did before, and inserted the needle into the hole to hide the end, letting the knot pop to the inside of the plush. I know this step is kind of complicated and difficult, but trust me, it's super rewarding. And with that, our plushie is finished. It's a long one and it's pretty challenging, but I have to say, it's probably one of my favorites that I've ever made. Also, I forgot to mention, if you want your plushie to have a yarn tail, I show you how to do that in the rhino plushie video, and I think it would look really cute on this cow. Be warned though, it's pretty finicky, so therefore it takes a bit of time, and that's mainly why I don't put tails on my plushies too often anymore. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed it, and it would be pretty cool if you subscribed for more fuzzy sock plushies, sewing, and crochet videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time!